You're Joseph Stalin. You've taken over Russia. You've been educated in a seminary in Georgia, by the way. Up till 1917, for hundreds of years, hundreds of millions of Russians have been told that the head of the state is a god. That the Tsar is above power, ordinary secular power, that he's, and he's the head of the Russian Orthodox Church as well as the... You shouldn't be in the dictatorship business if you can't take advantage of a well, a deep well of credulity and servility like that. It's your golden opportunity. What does he do? Heresy trials. Heresy trials, witch hunts. Miraculous discoveries such as Lysenko's biology. The worship of the leader from whom all blessings flow. As I described North Korea, the most religious state I've ever seen. Um, mutatis mutandis, this would apply also to Mao's China with the same background of superstition and servility. Now, for there to be a fair test about this, you'd have to do the following. And no one I've ever debated with has even tried it. So you be the first. You find me a state or a society that threw off theocracy and threw off religion and said, we adopt the teachings of Lucretius and Democritus and Galileo and Spinoza and Darwin and Russell and Jefferson and Thomas Paine. And we make those what we teach our children. We make that scientific and rational humanism our teaching. And you find me that state that did that and fell into tyranny and slavery and famine and torture and then we'll be on a level playing field. As it is, all you've done is show that the idea of worship and the idea of credulity and the idea of servility and slavery to religion is a bad idea in the first place. But none of the czars and none of the Chinese kings... If anyone thinks that there's a question, having, who's heard me, who thinks there's a question I answered poorly or inadequately or badly or failed to answer at all and would like to challenge me, I'd happily give them five minutes. But I've, I have, so to say, shot my bolt otherwise. It, it, is there anyone who would like to challenge me? Yes. Please. If there is no God, why do you spend your whole life trying to convince people that there isn't? Why don't you just stay home? Was the, <laughs> Can you repeat that? So was the, question, oh, the, the question is, uh, if, there, if there is no God, why spend your life and career uh, trying to refute that? Why not just uh, leave it alone and stay home? Fair enough? Um, well, it's, it's not my, it isn't my whole career, uh, for one thing. It's become a, a major preoccupation of my life, though, in the last eight or nine years, especially since uh, September 11, 2001, to try and help generate an opposition to theocracy and its depredations internationally. That, that, that is now probably my main political preoccupation to help people in Afghanistan, in Somalia, in Iraq, in Lebanon, in Israel, so resist those who sincerely want to encompass the destruction of civilization and sincerely believe they have God on their side in wanting to do so. I think maybe I will take a few minutes just to say uh, something that I find repulsive about especially monotheistic messianic religion. Um, in, it, with a large part of itself, it quite clearly do, wants us all to die. It wants this world to come to an end. You can tell the yearning for things to be over uh, whenever you read any of its real texts or listen to any of its real, authentic spokesmen. Not the, uh, sort of the pathetic apologists who sometimes masquerade for it. Those who talk, there was a famous uh, spokesman for this in, in Virginia until recently, uh, about the rapture. Uh, say that you know, those of us who have chosen rightly will be gathered to the arms of Jesus, uh, leaving all of the rest of you behind. If we're in a car, it's your lookout. That car won't have a driver anymore. If we're, if we're a pilot, that's your lookout. That plane will crash. We will be with Jesus, and the rest of you can go straight to hell. Uh, the, the eschatological element that is inseparable from Christianity, if you don't believe that there is to be an apocalypse, there is going to be an end. Uh, a, a separation of the sheep and the goats, a condemnation, a final one, then you're not really a believer. And the, the contempt for the things of this world shows through all of them. It's well put in an old rhyme from a, 
an English uh, exclusive brethren sect, uh, says that we are the pure and chosen few, and all the rest are damned. There's room enough in hell for you. We don't want heaven crammed. Uh, you can tell it when you see the extreme Muslims talk. They cannot wait. They cannot wait for death and destruction to overtake and overwhelm the world. They can't wait for, uh, for a, 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 what I would call, without ambiguity, a final solution. When you look at the Israeli settlers, uh, paid for often by American tax dollars, deciding that if they can steal enough land from other people, and get all the Jews into the promised land and all the non-Jews out of it, then finally the Jewish people will be worthy of the return of the Messiah. And there are Christians in this country who consider it their job to help this happen so that Armageddon can occur. So that the painful business of living as humans and studying civilization and trying to acquire learning and knowledge and health and medicine and to push back can all be scrapped. And, and the, the cult of death can take over. That, to me, is a hideous thing in, in eschatological terms, in end times terms, uh, on its own. A hateful idea, a hateful practice, and a hateful theory, but very much to be opposed in our daily lives, where there are people who sincerely mean it, who want, who want to ruin uh, the good relations that could exist between different peoples, nations, uh, races, countries, tribes, ethnicities. Um, who, who say, who openly say they love death more than we love life and who are betting that with God on their side, they're right about that. So when I say, in, as the subtitle of my book, that I think religion poisons everything, I'm not just doing what publishers like and coming up with a provocative subtitle. I mean to say it infects us in, the, in our most basic integrity. It says we can't be moral without Big Brother, without a totalitarian permission. It means we can't be good to one another. It means we can't think with, without this. We, we must be afraid. We must also be forced to love someone who we fear. The essence of sadomasochism, the essence of abjection, the essence of the master-slave relationship, and that knows that death is coming and can't wait to bring it on. I say this is evil. And uh, though I do some nights stay home, I enjoy more uh, the nights when I go out and fight against this ultimate wickedness and ultimate stupidity. Thank you. That is... By the way, the Russian, the Russian Orthodox Church always stayed with Stalin, always stayed with Stalin. But they never killed 30% of their population. Who didn't? The Russians never killed 30% of the population before the... Communists took over, 20 or 30 percent. No czar ever did that. No, no Christian czar ever did any killing on it. Well, no, excuse me, they started the First World War. They started the pogroms. They brought the protocols of the elders of Zion to, that was imported by czarist secret policemen to national socialist uh, Christian gangsters in Europe. How much do you think the export of Russian Orthodox anti-Semitism cost us in point of lives and war? And have you ever counted up? what happened to uh, the wars uh, in the wars that Tsarism started and carried on and the persecutions and the famines and the tortures and the starvation and the people who just died of neglect come on you want to do this accounting I'm here I'm really here for you <laughs> or what the Serbian or what the Serbian Orthodox and the Russian Orthodox have just done in the Balkans the, yes. the most recent genocide we've seen in Europe, entirely done by, by a Russian and a Serbian Orthodox fascist and Catholic uh, Croatian Ustasha, grinding a whole part of civilized Europe into nothingness and bloodshed for their filthy, stupid medieval quarrels. How dare you say that any secularist, we who've opposed this kind of barbaric stuff, are on all fours with these creeps? Don't you should take it back. You owe me an apology. You lose, boy chick. You lose, boy chick. Please. Hey, civility. Civility. Civility is overrated. You've got to believe in everything I say, or go to hell or heaven. Because, and here's why you've got to agree with me. Because my mother never went to bed with anybody. And that proves the truth of what I say. 
or that I, or by the way, it looks, I must have looked very dead when they took me down from the cross, but I didn't die. And that proves my point. I, I'm willing to grant it all. I'm willing to grant the Immaculate Conception first, then the Virgin Birth, then the Resurrection, and the Annunciation and the Assumption. I'm willing to grant all of it. It doesn't prove the truth of the proposition that you should take no thought for the morrow. The central doctrine of Jesus of Nazareth, take no thought for the morrow. No investment, no thrift, no care for your children, that you should abandon your family, not worry about construction, about investment, about anything. Just follow me. Uh, a, a ridiculous and immoral proposition that as C.S. Lewis so cleverly, and I must say for him, very honestly puts it, means that the man must either have been a maniac, a sick man, an evil man, or he must have believed that the world was coming immediately to an end and that he was commanded to announce this fact to the deluded Bronze Age inhabitants of Palestine. Because if he didn't believe that, if he didn't believe he was divinely mandated, then his words would not have been inaccurate or false, they would have been wicked. That's what you have to be talking about. Now, there is, on the historicity point, there, is, uh, only, there are only two reasons, I think, to, to suppose that there may have been the figure of some kind of deluded rabbi uh, present at that time. The first is the fakery of the story. The fakery itself proves something. The, the prophecy says this man must be born in the house of David, of David's line in David's town. It means he must be born in Bethlehem. Jesus of Nazareth is well known to be born in Nazareth. In order to get him to Bethlehem, a huge fabrication has to be undertaken. A census is proposed by Caesar Augustus. No such census ever took place. The, uh, the people of the region were not required to go back to their hometown to be registered. That's never happened. Uh, Quirinius was not governor of Syria in that year, as the Gospels say. None of the story of the Nativity is true in any detail, and not one of the Gospels agrees with each other on this fabrication. But the fabrication itself suggests something. If they were simply going to make up the whole thing, and there'd never been any such person, then why not just have him born in Bethlehem right there and leave out the Nazarene business? So the very falsity of it, the very fanatical attempt to make it come right, suggests that yes, there may have been a charismatic, deluded individual wandering around at that time. But which is most impressive to you? The fantastic fabrications, the unbelievably inane and inarticulate preachments, or the inconsistencies in the story? You could mention another thing about the resurrection. Most of the witnesses to this are women, illiterate, stupid, deluded, hysterical females of the kind who in a Jewish court at that time would have had about as much chance of being listened to as they would in an Islamic court today. What religion that wants its fabrication to be believed is going to say, you've got to believe it because we have some illiterate, hysterical girls who said they saw this. No, it's impressive to me. It's impressive to me that the evidence is so thin and is so hysterical and is so feeble and is so obviously, strenuously uh, uh, cobbled together because it suggests that there was something was going on, there was some character. And I don't want to therefore to profane those who think that no, uh, that there must have been something and say no, there was nothing. This is not a whole cloth fabrication, but it is a very human and very intelligible and very um, pitiable, I think, uh, 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 practice of fraud uh, that may have worked on stupefied uh, peasants in the Greater Jerusalem area, but should really have no power to influence anyone um, in this room, whereas the noble uh, methods and words and systems by which Socrates reasoned uh, will continue to illuminate our path for as long as we care about the only real gift we have which is our independent um, intelligence. Uh, atheism by itself is, of course, not a moral position or a political one of any kind. It simply is the refusal to believe in a supernatural dimension. For you to say of Nazism that it was the implementation of the work of Charles Darwin is a filthy slander, undeserving of you, and an insult to this audience. Darwin's thought was not taught in Germany. Uh, Darwinism was derided in Germany, along with every other form of unbelief, the, 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 all the great 
modern atheist thinkers, Darwin, Einstein, and Freud were alike despised uh, by the National Socialist regime. Now, just to take the most notorious of the 20th century totalitarianisms, the most finished example, the most perfected one, the most ruthless and refined one, that of National Socialism, the one that fortunately allowed the escape of all these great atheist thinkers and many others to the United States, country of separation of church and state that gave them welcome. If it's an atheistic regime, then how come that in the first chapter of Mein Kampf, Hitler says he's doing God's work and executing God's will in destroying the Jewish people? How come the Fuhrer oath that every officer of the party and the army had to take, making Hitler into a minor god, begins, I swear in the name of Almighty God, my loyalty to the Fuhrer? How come? that on the belt buckle of every Nazi soldier it says, Gott mit uns, God on our side. How come that the first treaty made by the National Socialist Dictatorship, the very first, is with the Vatican, ex exchanging political control of Germany for Catholic control of German education? How come that the church has celebrated the birthday of the Fuhrer every day, every year, I mean, on that day, until democracy put an end to this filthy quasi-religious, superstitious, barbarous, reactionary system. Again, this is not a difference of emphasis between us to suggest that there's something fascistic about me and my beliefs is something I won't hear said and you shouldn't believe. Thank you. Supernatural claims must be true or none of them are, my own position, or only one of them is. The least probable position of all Right. The one you've decided to occupy. You were asking I was, me. No, I was asking how, how, on what you found. Your assertion that oh, yours, the, yours is the only true bill. The ones, the ones I believe in, the, the ones I believe in, are the ones I believe in. Yes. For example, I, I, why are your miracles the true bill and the others are all copies of it? Because they happened. And, uh, and I believe that Joseph, when he found out that Mary, his betrothed, was pregnant, he followed David Hume's advice to the letter. And he didn't. He, he didn't know what the most reasonable explanation was, and uh, that sort of that sort of thing. Um, it's not that in the, in the ancient world, uh, in the ancient world, it's not that people didn't know where babies came from. It's no, all Joseph knew was who hadn't made her pregnant. Right. If we have to be uh, crude about this. Correct. And if you were David Hume, you would ask which is more likely, that the fact that he hasn't made her pregnant and she is is the result of divine intervention, or that a Jewish girl could tell a fib. Sure. And Joseph... Now, of the two, I don't think the latter is overwhelmingly improbable. No religion has ever been founded except with the claim that its founder and prophet was born of a virgin. I have the whole list in the front of my book, if anyone... By the way, available at fine bookstores everywhere. <laughs> um, I have in the first two pages of my book a list... There, there is no religion from Aztec to Hindu, uh, including Buddhism, uh, where the... The, the Gautama is born through a slit in his mother's side, where, where it doesn't begin with a, with a, with a uh, miraculous birth. And there's no counterfeit money. You couldn't doesn't... be in the religion business without claiming that, especially in the greater Jerusalem area. No, nobody counterfeits brown Safeway shopping bags. They're not worthwhile. It's not worth it to counterfeit them. If something's worthwhile, ah. you, 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 all right, you've got to... Nobody bothers to counterfeit bad currency. Mm -hmm. Well, it turns out that they do. <laughs> But not currently it turns out, that, it turns yeah. out that, things, that the ironies of history and the, and the cruelties that, that reality practice on us as a suffering species, yes, actually, people will go, go to great lengths to say, I'd like to deal in this bankrupt currency. It can happen. And it has, as you've just shown. In other words, we don't particularly welcome the idea of the annihilation either of ourselves or of the uh, entropic heat death of the universe. We don't like the idea, but there's a good deal of evidence to suggest that that is what's going to happen. And there's very, very little evidence to suggest that I'll see you all again in some theme park. I, there's absolutely no evidence for that at all, so I'm willing to accept on the evidence conclusions that may be unwelcome to me. I'm sorry if I sound as if I'm spelling that out. Probably about 180,000 years ago, uh, an appalling global warming crisis occurred and the, the estimate is that the number of humans in Africa went down to between 40 and 30,000. This close to joining every other species that had gone extinct.
it's, there's a certain arrogance to this assumption that all of this, all of this extraordinary development was all about us. The tremendous wastefulness of it, the tremendous cruelty of it, the tremendous caprice of it, the tremendous tinkering and incompetence of it, never mind, at least we're here. The whole universe was designed with just you in mind. There's no, there's no claim I know how to make that says atheism is true, because atheism is the statement that a certain proposition isn't true. So uh, I wish you'd get this bit right. But I would say, yes, I think we have free will. When asked why I think so, I would have to take refuge in philosophical irony and say, because I don't think we have any choice but to have free will. <laughs> but the Christian answer is, of course you have free will. The boss insists upon it. Uh, why is it that the Islamic country, Iran, is the threat to the peace in the world and not the Zionist? Uh, is it America's support of Israel? Well, hundreds of people are getting killed uh, in Gaza and West Bank every day uh, with the support of America. The Israel-Palestinian war has been going on for 61 years and we are not actually looking at what, um, what is actually happening and we're fearing about what is not happening. Mm. We're fearing about something that hasn't happened. Mm. Mr. Hitchens? It's become a familiar thing. I, I should perhaps preface this by saying that with Edward Said, the late uh, Professor Edward Said, I, I wrote a book about the rights of Palestinians and the way in, this, in which these have been negated by Israeli policy. But um, I know a lot of people in the Arab and Muslim world who are fed up with having the subject changed to Israel whenever human rights for them comes up. A very good example of this just last week in Tehran, where the government has an official Al-Quds Day, as it's called, the Day of Jerusalem, where school children and others are paraded. It's a more or less compulsory demonstration to say they'll give their blood and their lives for Palestine. And, and hundreds of thousands of Iranians turned up to say, no, we'll only give our blood for Iran, thanks. We're fed up with being told by the regime that they represent the oppressed of Palestine, that we can't talk. And, it, and they are having to shed their blood because the regime keeps on killing them for wanting to have a say in their own internal affairs. And a regime that does this and has just pulled off a, a blood-stained military coup uh, that's overturned the results even of an already predeterminedly fraudulent election that says that, the, the, that a, a woman's voice is worth that of only... Uh, th 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 sorry, it takes three women in a court against one man. Um, that uses torture and rape as, uh, as policies in prison and so forth. You want a regime like that to have nuclear weapons? You're welcome. But you should say that's what you don't mind. Are you going to say that? Are you going to say you've no objection? That the real problem is the Jewish state? Come on, so, be serious. So, so you <laughs> So the Jewish state doesn't have nuclear weapons? Is that, is that what you're saying? Well, now, I appeal again to the fair-mindedness and intelligence of the audience. Did I say that? No, but Did I by any, in any way imply it? No, but... No. Did I not begin with a, a throat clearing, which I, I'll amplify to you, <laughs> about my long record of work about this, my defense of the Israeli dissidents who published the news about Israel's illegal program and gone to jail for it. I can refer you to all that if you like. But my point was directed specifically to you. Yeah. I said, does okay. this in your mind make the destruction of human rights in Islamic countries okay or not? No. Okay, let's, let's hear from Waleed. Well, that's progress of the kind. Yes. Please. If there, if there is no God, why do you spend your whole life trying to convince people that there isn't? Why don't you just stay home? Was the <laughs> can you repeat that? So they was the question? Oh, the, uh, the question is, uh, if there if there is no God, why spend your life and career uh, trying to re refute that? Why not just uh, leave it alone and stay home? Fair enough. Um, well, it's it's not my it isn't my whole career uh, for one thing. It's become a a uh, major preoccupation of my life, though, in the last eight or nine years, especially since uh, September 11, 2001, to try and help uh, generate an oppositional humanism, our teaching. And you find me the state that did that and fell into tyranny 
and slavery and famine and torture, and then we'll be on a level playing field. As it is, all you've done is show that the idea of worship and the idea of credulity and the idea of servility and slavery to religion is a bad idea in the first place. But none of the czars and none of the Chinese kings... If anyone thinks that there's a question, having, who's heard me, who thinks there's a question I answered poorly, or inadequately, or badly, or failed to answer at all, and would like to challenge me, I'd happily give them five minutes. But I've, I have, so to say, shot my bolt otherwise. Is, is there anyone who would like to challenge me? Fabulous discoveries, such as Lysenko's biology, the worship of the leader from whom all blessings flow. As I described, North Korea, the most religious state I've ever seen. Um, mutatis mutandis, this would apply also to Mao's China, with the same background of superstition and servility. Now, for there to be a fair test about this, you'd have to do the following. And no one I've ever debated with has even tried it. So you be the first. You find me a state or a society that threw off theocracy and threw off religion and said, we adopt the teachings of Lucretius and Democritus and Galileo and Spinoza and Darwin and Russell and Jefferson and Thomas Paine. And we make those what we teach our children. We make that scientific and relation to theocracy and its depredations internationally. That, that, that is now probably my main political preoccupation. To help people in Afghanistan, in Somalia, in Iraq, in Lebanon, in Israel so resist those who sincerely want to encompass the destruction of civilization and sincerely believe they have God on their side in wanting to do so. A thing, maybe I will take a few minutes just to say uh, something that I find repulsive about especially monotheistic messianic religion. Um, in, it, with a large part of itself, it quite clearly do, wants us all to die. It wants this world to come to an end. You can tell the yearning for things to be over uh, whenever you read any of its real texts or listen to any of its real, authentic spokesmen. Not the uh, sort of... You're Joseph Stalin. You've taken over Russia. You've been educated in a seminary in Georgia, by the way. Up till 1917, for hundreds of years, hundreds of millions of Russians have been told that the head of the state is a god. That the Tsar is above power, ordinary secular power, that he's, and he's the head of the Russian Orthodox Church as well as the... You shouldn't be in the dictatorship business if you can't take advantage of a well, a deep well of credulity and servility like that. It's your golden opportunity. What does he do? Heresy trials. Heresy trials, witch hunts. Mirac 